Welcome, my name is Michael. I want to present our paper, Enabling Viewpoint Learning Through Dynamic Label Generation. This is joint work with Pedro Hermosia, Per Pau Vasquez, and Timo Ropinski. My talk will be structured as follows. First, I want to introduce the problem of optimal viewpoint selection and motivate using deep learning to solve this task. Then I want to talk about label ambiguity, which is the main challenge when trying to learn optimal viewpoint selections. Then I want to present our proposed solution, which is the dynamic label generation. Finally, I want to present the results of the experiments in our paper. Finding good views has applications in many different fields. They range from finding vantage points for capturing stills in architecture to initial camera placement when trying to expect complex objects or scenes to viewpoint recommendations in scientific visualizations. To determine good good views, different approaches have been proposed. Early work was often rule-based, such as the rule of thirds or the golden ratio. Later work evaluated statistics by evaluating user studies or datasets of images. Recent work focuses on evaluating geometric attributes. This includes the most common viewpoint quality metrics, which are the viewpoint entropy, and the viewpoint mutual information. To evaluate such a viewpoint quality metric for a given model at a given viewpoint, the model has to be first rendered into a 2D image. During this rendering process, also geometric properties of the model are extracted. For example, in the image on the right, you can see the projected area of the individual polygons of the model. The distribution of these geometric properties in the image can then be evaluated using an information theoretical function, for example, the entropy or the mutual information, to compute a quality value for the given view. However, this quality value is not enough to identify whether or not the given view is good or bad, as it has to be set into relation with other views of the same model. For this, we have to consider many different views of the same model. Then we have to render the model from each of these viewpoints to compute the viewpoint quality metric for each of the views. With the sampled view quality distribution, we are now able to rank the views of the model and determine which views are good in the given metric. However, this approach has several drawbacks. First, it can be sensitive to the input mesh quality as the geometric properties are often defined on the input mesh, thus making the resulting quality value also sensitive to input mesh quality and mesh discretization. Second, finding optimal view is a very time-consuming process as it involves rendering the model from many different views to compute the view quality distribution, which can take several minutes for a single model. To overcome these limitations, we present a learned approach which directly predicts viewpoints from the input 3D model thus separating the viewpoint selection from the rendering process, which allows for a much faster evaluation. Further, we propose to use point convolutional neural networks, which only re receive point cloud information as input, and thus makes our approach robust to the input mesh quality and mesh discretization. The key component to predicting viewpoints is our novel dynamic label generation, which resolves inherent label ambiguity problems, which I want to discuss next. So let's take a look at the label ambiguity problem. In the following, we will visualize the um, spherical view quality distributions with a 2D surface projection. Let's take a look at the standard deep learning pipeline. For any data point X, which in our case corresponds to an input 3D model, for example, this airplane, we have to select a label Y, which we use during training. In our case, that means we consider the view quality distribution and choose a view with highest viewpoint quality, which could, for example, be this view from the left side of the model. Now we pair the data with the labels and pass it to the training routine. During training, we first evaluate the network to get a prediction, which could, for example, be this view indicated in yellow. Now we optimize the model by trying to minimize the distance between the network prediction and the label. However, for this input model, we can find a second optimal view, which is the identical view from the other side of the model, as the model is symmetric. Now, imagine that we have the same data point twice in our data set, but we have an inconsistent label decision, 
as the second model is labeled with the different view. However, as the network receives the identical input, it will make an identical prediction for this model, but it sees a different label and will try to minimize the distance to this label. In summary, the network will try to minimize the distance to two labels for the same input, resulting in a suboptimal um, prediction of the network. While this case might be easy to identify in the dataset as the models are identical, imagine that the second model is not completely identical, but is slightly different, but st still similar enough for the network to make a similar prediction. Now again, the network receives contradicting gradients for very similar input and will be prevented from learning a meaningful prediction. And it is clear that in this case, it would be beneficial for the, to provide the same label for both of these inputs. And ideally, we would select the lower of the two labels, which is closer to the prediction. For this, we present our dynamic label generation approach. So again, let's consider the two rather similar input models. Now, instead of selecting a single label, we consider the entire label distributions, which in our case are the viewpoint quality distributions. Now we pair the data with the distributions and pass them to the training routine. During training, we again first evaluate the network to receive the network prediction, again indicated in yellow. Then we propose to select a label dependent on the current network prediction, which is what we call a dynamic label generation. Ideally, we want to select the label which is closest to the current prediction, which would correspond to the second label we saw on the previous slide. Now the network sees the same label for both similar inputs and during the optimization step, it will receive um, sim similar gradient directions and thus the two models will reinforce the training process instead of uh, contradicting gradients as in the previous case. Note that in this setting, we delegate the decision on whether two input models are similar or not to the network by making it dependent on the network prediction. When designing a dynamic label generation, we make two main considerations. First, we want to ensure that the selected label is of high quality. Second, to resolve the label ambiguity and make a consistent label decision, we want to enforce a locality in the label selection. For this, we present two different approaches. The first one, the multiple labels, prefer a quality over the locality. The second one, the Gaussian labels, have a higher um, locality constraint. Later, we will combine these two methods for optimal performance. So first, let's take a look at the multiple label approach. Again, let's consider the view quality distribution and now we set a quality threshold alpha and choose every label which is above the quality threshold as potential label during training. For example, if we choose a rather high quality threshold alpha, we might find the two labels we saw before. Now during training, we evaluate the network, again visualized in yellow, and optimize towards the label which is closest to the prediction, thus enforcing a locality in the decision and resolving the label ambiguity. However, if we choose a smaller alpha, we might find more clusters. And if we now evaluate the network and choose the closest label, we might choose a label which is of suboptimal viewpoint quality, which can lead to suboptimal convergence of the method while still resolving the label ambiguity. In our experiments, although we use a rather high quality threshold of 99%, we still find these label clusters for some of our data points. To overcome this problem, we present a second approach, which we called Gaussian labels. The idea behind this is to weight the label distribution based on the distance to the current prediction. For this, let's again consider the label distribution. Now we first evaluate the network to get an initial prediction, again indicated in yellow, and now we multiply the distribution with a Gaussian function centered at the current network prediction thus enforcing a locality. Now, as label, we choose the maximum of the result of this multiplication, which again would select the global maximum of the, the, the closer global maximum of the original distribution. In this setting, we have two parameters to 
<coughs> to control the locality of this method. First, we have the variance of the Gaussian function, which controls the width of the Gaussian kernel. Second, we introduce an offset s, indicated by the green arrow in the middle distribution, which can be used as a global offset to the Gaussian function. This ensures that distant global maximum are not discarded in the computation, which can be seen um, in the right distribution. This way, we ensure that if the initial network prediction is in a bad area, the network can still select a label which is rather far away. However, the stronger locality of this method makes it sensitive to local maxima. For optimal performance, we propose to combine these two approaches by first training our network with the multiple label approach to guide the prediction towards an area around a global maximum. Then in a second stage, we use the Gaussian labels to refine the predictions and move the pre prediction from the boundary of the label clusters to the center where we um, find the global maximum. Note, while we um, demonstrated this, the dynamic label approach on the problem of optimal viewpoint selection, it can be applied to any deep learning task which involves um, label ambiguity. Also, the two methods, multiple label and Gaussian labels, are just two um, example methods for dynamic label generations and other methods could be applied depending on the problem. Now I want to go to the experiments in our paper. In our experiments, we consider four different viewpoint quality metrics. The viewpoint entropy, the visibility ratio, the viewpoint callback Leibler distance, and the viewpoint mutual information. These viewpoint quality metrics have different levels of sensitivity to the input mesh discretization. However, these methods are still all sensitive to the input mesh quality and suffer, for example, from self-intersections or non-surface meshes. We evaluate these quality measures on eight different object categories from the ModelNet40 dataset. To reduce the impact of the mesh quality on our computations, we use a mesh preprocessing pipeline to clean the meshes using existing mesh cleaning algorithms. We sample the viewpoints by considering 1000 viewpoints uniformly distributed on the view sphere. We then compute the viewpoint qualities by rendering the model at a resolution of one megapixel. To our knowledge, this is the first large-scale view quality dataset and it is publicly available on our project page. To predict viewpoints from the models, we first sample the input models into point clouds which are then processed by a feature extractor network consisting of hierarchical point convolutions to extract a shape descriptor of the input shape. This shape descriptor can then be evaluated by MLPs to predict viewpoints for the different viewpoint quality measures. Note that we train the feature extractor shared for all, the, for all four view quality metrics for better performance. Further, we train all the networks category specific which means we train eight different networks for our eight object categories. Here you can see the example for the chair category. The use of point clouds of, as input makes our method robust to the input mesh discretization as differently meshed um, insta instances of the same geometric object will result in similar uh, point clouds, which will, um, will then result in similar predictions by our network. Here you can see some of the predicted viewpoints for the eight different object categories and the four viewpoint quality metrics. We also visualize the viewpoint quality distributions centered at the current prediction. Note how our approach successfully predicts high quality viewpoints. However, in some cases, the pre these predictions can be different from the crown truth optimal views as our dynamic label generation allows the selection of different high quality labels than the crown truth optimal view. This can be especially seen for the toilet model on the right, where our label sel selection strategy chooses the view from the left of the toilet instead of the ground truth right view. We also compare our dynamic label generation to other methods to resolve label ambiguity. We measure the quality <clears throat> by considering the relative view quality of the view quality distribution of the current model. Here we compare to the single label approach, which does not resolve label ambiguity. We 
We also compare to the spherical regression, which is a method to resolve excess symmetric label ambiguity. Further, we compare to the deep label distribution learning, in which the network tries to predict the entire view quality distribution instead of predicting a single view. Note that all three um, all three cases of our dynamic label generation um, outperform the existing methods and that the combination of our two proposed methods yields the best result over all four viewpoint quality metrics. To evaluate the robustness of our method to the input mesh quality, we take our network, which is trained on the clean pre-processed meshes, and evaluate it on the raw model net 40 meshes, and also on data provided by Key et al., which use a different pipeline to clean the input meshes. Note that we only see a slight drop in the quality of the prediction of our network, which means that for evaluating our network, it is not necessary to use the, our pre-processing pipeline, but it can be evaluated on uh, input meshes of varying quality and also input meshes from different mesh cleaning pipelines. We also compare the timing of a brute force sampling strategy to, to our learned approach. We can see that for the sampling strategy, the time scales linearly in the number of considered views and the size of the input model. Whereas for our model, which is trained on 1000 reference views, the execution time is almost constant for differently sized input. Further, we can see that our method greatly benefits from easy parallelization as it can process batches of uh, different models at the same time. We can also see the drastic speed up, which comes from the fact that we separate the rendering from the viewpoint selection. To summarize our contributions, we provide the first large scale view quality dataset, which contains view quality annotations for eight different object categories and four different view quality metrics. We present a novel dynamic label generation method, which can resolve labeling ambiguity and outperforms existing methods and can be applied to any learning problem which involves label ambiguity. We demonstrated using deep learning for viewpoint selection. By separating the viewpoint prediction from the rendering, we achieve much faster evaluation times. Further, the use of point cloud networks makes our approach robust to the input mesh quality. And we demonstrated the applicability of our method for different viewpoint quality metrics. With this, I want to conclude my talk and thank you for your attention.